welcome to another video by DJs BRC. Today I wanted to show you how to change a rear drive shaft on a Ruster two-wheel drive. We have a Ruster two-wheel drive in front of us right now that has been some upgrade done on it, basically the RPM front A-arms, the RPM uh, transmission mount, and it has a castle creation motor and speed control. The Sidewinder 3, and I think this is the 3800 KV, if I remember correctly. All right, now it's not really going forward because I'm not sure if you can really see it here. She's going to focus. She wants to. But here you go. You physically see the dry, flash, the dry shaft is coming off of it. There you go. It's just finally zoomed in and coming out. Now, what we need to fix this would will be the Traxxas 4628R and the Traxxas 1951. The half shafts and these are the differential out the differential wow diff outputs. There you go. <laughs> and let's begin. One of the first things we'll need to do is remove this wheel off the vehicle. You will need a 7 mil nut driver, a ratchet, or even the stock uh, cross kind of a key. I'm using my MIP 7 mil. Now the other thing we'll need to do is pop this X off. Basically you just go in between and pry it off and you'll have a pin to remove. And put these aside. Now the other thing too you will need to do is remove the uh, rear bar and that's a two mil. Oop, no, that's a three mil. Let's remove this guy here. There we go, again. Put the screw aside. Now basically you'll be able to flip this and be able to remove everything. Now be careful. You will have nylon spacer. Put aside. You'll you should have another spacer here, very small one. Basically it goes with the bar. We'll put that aside. Now, if we see half shaft here is broken, missing a piece, put that aside. Now we're going to inspect this one here. Basically what happens on these guys here, not sure if she's going to want to zoom here. Come on. It's being very, very difficult. There we go. It's right here. They get oversized after a while and they just physically break. Usually what I suggest is you just look at these guys here. If they don't lo look oval anymore and basically look like spread out, it would be time to change them. And what happens after a while is basically they just get oval and snap. This is the way you take off. Let's say you're trying to do zero to 60 and you're trying to do it in uh, one second instead of taking three seconds to get there. Usually what I suggest is you slowly take off. Once the drive has been engaged, now give it. But from zero to 60 in a couple of seconds, it gets hard on your shaft because every time your shaft basically, I don't know how they said exactly, but kinks itself or something. Now, the other thing we need to do before going here, we do have another part to remove right here. It is hard to reach with the transmission cover in our, in our way. We will need a Phillips screwdriver. As uh, you can say, I was not prepared for that one because it's not out. You'll have two screws to remove.
You'll have one here, and the other one's in the bottom right here. And this one was not put back together because it's not the same size. You had a fill up on top and a 2.0 on the bottom, two mil. And while you're in the general corner at the same time, you should maybe inspect your spur to make sure it's fine. This one looks very correct. Now you will need a 1.5. And we're gonna to need to locate where is the pin, the pin that holds the diff output shaft. That one's a little bit hard to, to see. I'm using where they are. And I'm not sure if the camera could pick this up, it's, yeah. But you'll be able to remove this pin. To be able to remove the yoke, the output yoke completely. And usually if you're trying to find it, you're able to look, see this part and usually they're just a little bit lower and you'll be able to get with your screwdriver and remove it. Now, normally I would try to save this ball here and transfer it to the new one. Uh, in this case, I won't. Because the client physically tried to <laughs> re-glue this together here and make this work longer. Unfortunately, these kinds of plastic, you cannot glue them. They don't glue well and they just break again that's why the ball is a little bit harder to turn here but these parts completely will put aside and this pin will keep now let's open one of the packs now in this pack here <clears throat> all right you'll have two yolks And two more pins. In case you lose this one here, you got two new ones. And for some reason, they give you two screws. I'll be totally honest with you. I have no clue where these screws go. Now we open this pack here. And this pack, they give you the rest of this, what you'll need to rebuild this one here. That's what's called the half shafts. Now in the half shaft here, if you look, this is the part from here. This is fine, we don't need this. But these I got aside. These are the, two, the ones we need. I like that broken one, it matches. Now we only need one, but this aside, we'll need one yoke and one of these pins here. They do give you four, put them aside. In your future, you might need them. Now, one of the tricks I can give you here is basically uh, grab yourself a cup of hot water. Okay, and put these in the hot water. I'll go grab the cup and I'll be right back. Okay. Got my cup of hot water here. What I'm going to do is basically put them in the water. You could just basically do this if you wanted to. And leave them in a couple of seconds here. And the reason you want to do this is basically what's going to do, the hot water will basically soften the plastic. Plastic is hard right now. And if you're trying to put these, these balls in, 
you'll be able to put physically one half aside and it's extremely hard to do the other one. You could grab your, uh, your flat screwdriver and try to pry it and pry it. What's going to happen here? I'm going to remove this guy. What's going to happen? You're going to take these two ears, let's say, and basically spread them. And this plastic, when it's in normal state, has a memory. It will remember that it was bent this way and stay that way. Now, it gives you more issues in the future for the ball just to come off of it. Put them in hot water, again, will soften the plastic, it will help you to spread them, and it will come back. Let's grab one of our pieces here. <clears throat> and we will leave the other one in. I'm just going to try to wipe off the water a bit. Now this plastic here, way softer. Gonna grab my new my pliers here. There we go. And it, they're in. It goes way faster, way easier. The other thing I do is basically I just try to push them back in to make sure. Some of you are wondering what kind of pliers I have in my hands right now. They're basically for ball studs. Uh, this is mostly made for uh, airplanes and the helicopters. But I love them because of the gouges inside of here. The opening, should I say. I was able just to grab it here and push on one. Just grab one of the sides and be able to go on in between. And be able to push on it. I love it for that. Now let's grab the other piece here. Can't really see. Come on. There we go. Again, and then remove the water. Now, same situation on this guy here. I'm gonna put it on one side. This is a little bit more tricky sometimes because it will come off the other side. Like I said, you might struggle a bit. There we go. I'm going to grab my pliers and just basically push these two together a bit and wait. There we go. And our two links are back together. This looks better than this guy here. Again, you could reuse the old one. But I said to myself, this will get damaged too and why not? Let's... For a couple of couple of bucks more, get both parts and rebuild it correctly. Have a, that way you don't have any issues. This side here is fine. They're not a, way off an oval. Now we'll grab one of our new pins. Bring back the vehicle. And try to locate the flat part of the diff output. Now again, it's hard to show on camera, but you'll see it once. You're trying to keep it as flat as possible this side, because what I'm going to do, 
locate my hole put it straighter as possible and grab my 1.5 and just screw it in and miss it at the same time. It happens. Now, the other thing too, I can say, a lot of people will say to me, oh, why you're not putting Loctite? That's one place you don't want Loctite. A simple reason is plastic, plastic. Loctite will eat plastic. You never put Loctite with plastic. If you wanted to make it, let's say, stay there a little bit, not longer, but have a bigger, better hole on it. The other thing you could use is CA glue. What CA glue does, it will glue the screw, the, the screw there. There we go. And prevent it from backing off. I do have a video. If you have a strip screw, to use CA to rebuild the thread on it. Works great. Now you have your half shaft in. What I do, I insert this guy in. in. Now these are keyed. They go, don't go one way, they'll go the other way. And put the half shaft back in. Now I'm gonna grab this guy here put it back. Now what you do is insert it here. Put that washer back if I can. There we go. And grab my 2.5 and screw it back. Now, if you're wondering why there's a washer there, basically the washer is there to prevent from squishing everything together. It gives a little bit of uh, spacing. Acts as a washer. Now, this is back in. Now, we're going to turn and grab our pin and put it this way. Now, we're going to go back where our X is and our pin. And the nylon washer, we're going to put the nylon washer in first. Then we're going to put our pin. And then locate our X and grab the flats. This part, put it like this. And gently push on it. And you'll hear a snap when it's completely in. Easier to install this back before physically putting the, the wheel back because you'll have a hard time. There we go. And it falls. Locate our two mil. There we go. And this is giving me a little bit of a heartache. There we go. Because it is a uh, aluminum plate in behind and if you don't put in correctly, you'll never be able to screw it back in. Now grab our Phillips screwdriver, screw this one in. Normally RPM supplies these screws and they're both Phillips. For some reason this vehicle, the uh, previous owner swapped it out. Now put a wheel back in, locate a wheel nut.
screw it back in. There we go. Now when we turn one wheel, the other one turns the opposite way. Telling us our shafts are rebuilt and it's accurate. Now if you have any questions or comment, post down there below. I'll be glad to answer you guys. If you want to be notified when I upload videos, hit that, uh, that bell in the corner. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And thank you.